So here we are again with the M3 MacBook Air. Pound for pound, it's one of the best performances for the weight and lightness factor that you can get on the market. It gives you an immense amount of flexibility because it really brings together performance and portability. You're getting 18 hours of battery life with exceptional performance in a silent fanless design. Anywhere from like a business owner to even a student could use this laptop and get everything they need done on it. So let's talk about all the differences here quickly this year. And then we'll go through the color comparisons. We'll talk about the specs, which specs and stuff like that you should get, what size you should get, which, you know, MacBook you should choose. And finally, should you even buy this? First and foremost, with the design Apple went with, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. You have pretty much the same design here with the same four colors, starlight, silver, space gray, and midnight. However, midnight does have an anodization seal to help reduce fingerprints. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the colors. The camera, the speakers, MagSafe charging, they've all been great year over year, and they are the same again this year. You have the 13 inch, you have the 15 inch, so it's, it's pretty much all the same there. Now some of the sore points and a lot of complaints in the previous years have been with the fact that the MacBook Air could not support dual monitors. And this was less than ideal for people who really wanted larger workstations when they came home and docked. But I'm happy to report that this has finally been fixed. However, with a small caveat, you need to have the lid closed. The second you open it, you lose a screen. Now, this also means that you need to have a keyboard and a mouse. However, I'd imagine anybody docking into a monitor or two is going to have one separate anyway, so that's probably not a big issue. The second difference comes in with the M3 chip, naturally. The M3 chip is now 60% faster than the M1 chip, and it has now AI capabilities. If you're coming from an Intel MacBook Air, it's also 13 times faster. So if you haven't switched from the older Intel MacBooks, then uh, this is a very compelling proposition. Now with the GPU, you have an all new architecture this year, which allows for optimizing GPU memory allocation and utilization so that it can adapt to different tasks. This helps with graphics performance as well as battery efficiency. Another change that we have this year is you have two times faster Wi-Fi speeds with Wi-Fi 6E. However, keep in mind, you'll need a compatible Wi-Fi 6E router in order to avail this. So if this is a big deal for you and you're looking forward to those Wi-Fi speeds, make sure you take a look at your router. And if you don't have it, then just budget the cost of another Wi-Fi 6E router into your purchase price. If you look at the M2 chip compared to the M3 chip, you'll notice that they both have still a 16 core neural engine. But it's important to note that the M3 version now is about 15% faster because of a three nanometer fabrication process. That really helps the M3, the latest version, boost things like on-device machine learning to help with AI tasks on apps and other features such as that. And the last difference is you have this new anodization seal in order to reduce the fingerprints on the midnight finish specifically. Now, okay, now that we've covered that, let's go through some of the buying decisions, starting with the size. Deciding between 13 inch and 15 inch, it's a tough one, but keep in mind the M2 15 inch is now discontinued. So if you want one, the only option is to go with the M3, the latest version. Now the 13 inch is actually 13.6 inches. And honestly, I personally feel this is the ideal size for someone on the go, needs that portability. Like for example, if you're a student and you're taking this from class to class, or you work a lot during your commutes or you travel a lot, this is perfect. You can always plug in when you get home and get a bigger monitor set up exactly like how I do. As for the 15 inch, I will say this, the 15 inch MacBook Air is probably one of the nicest laptops that I've used simply because of like the size and weight to screen form factor. It, it just feels and looks really fantastic. And if you like a lot of content consumption, if you're okay with the slightly larger 15 inch screen, Honestly, it's very, very enticing, especially if you're someone who usually doesn't like docking in for a monitor or you don't like working at a desk and you prefer your bed or your couch, then I think the 15 inch might actually be the better choice for you. Okay, next let's talk about the color. Firstly, Starlight has a really cool name, but it's basically very similar to silver, but with a warmer hue to it. So I'd say it's an in-between to gold and silver. But when you look at it in sunlight, it's honestly very, very tough to discern between silver and starlight. As for the color silver, it's always gonna remain a classic Apple MacBook option. It, I really like the contrasting keyboard to the laptop and I think it looks great overall. Space gray, I mean, also kinda a classic option by now for Apple. It's not as dark as the midnight, so it's kind of an in-between silver and midnight, however, leaning much more towards the midnight. It's a nice shade, I'll give it that. But I think the runaway color this year will still be midnight, simply because of the extra anodization process 
in order to reduce the fingerprints. Now, I will say the fingerprints don't like disappear completely. You're still gonna see them a little bit here and there, but it is significantly better. Now let's talk about the specs, the juicy part. So all these models are gonna come with the eight core CPU, so you can't upgrade that. However, you can go ahead and upgrade from the eight core GPU to the 10 core GPU. If you are someone who does any sort of graphics intensive tasks, like video editing or playing games or anything like that, or you think maybe down the road you might do a bunch more video editing or photo editing and stuff like that, I definitely recommend spending the extra $100 and upgrading the, to the 10 core GPU. Now this helps you also future proof your processor as well in my opinion. In terms of memory, the base eight gigabytes of RAM, I you could skirt by with it, but in my opinion, it's not ideal. If you're buying the laptop for like your parents or you're a very casual user and all you're doing is running basic apps, programs, web browsing, watching movies, everyday productivity apps, which come to think of it is probably like 80% of the use case for this laptop. Also, if you're like a regular student and you literally just need this laptop because you need a laptop to type on and do schoolwork and stuff like that on, and you don't have any extra special use cases for your laptop, like video editing, gaming, and all that stuff, then honestly, with the eight gigabytes of RAM, I think you'll be fine. However, if you do do any doo -doo video editing or you work with a lot of apps open, I definitely recommend going up to the 16 gigabytes of RAM. At the end of the day, this would be my proposition, okay? If you're somebody who keeps your laptops for a long time, then I'd recommend doing this upgrade because you basically future-proof yourself. As apps get more power-hungry these days and even web pages start to tie up a lot of memory, Having that extra RAM is going to be very helpful. As for the higher option, the 24 gigabytes of RAM, I think this is more so for people that work with a lot of data, have large content libraries, and you know need that extra RAM for that sake. So it's more of a special use case scenario. Lastly, as for storage, this is one area that I think you would know better yourself how much storage you need. Do you wanna save the extra 200 bucks and stick with the 256 gigabytes? By all means, go ahead and save that money. If you're already somebody who uses a lot of cloud storage and you're okay with external SSDs, then go ahead, save that 200 bucks and stay at the 256 gigabytes. But if you have large files stored on your computer all the time and you're struggling with storage and you're already carrying around SSDs and you don't wanna to have to do that and you don't wanna pay for cloud storage, then then it might be worthwhile to at least upgrade to 512 gigabytes of storage. Okay, so my ideal MacBook Air selection would be something like this. I would probably go with the middle option here that Apple provides on their website, and I would kind of just decide between, do you want more memory or do you want more storage? But either way, I would go with a 10 core GPU. Now, then you can decide, okay, 16 gigabytes of RAM or 512 gigabytes of storage. Both cost the same, just pick which poison you're willing to deal with. Last thing I wanna talk about is is it even worth it? Like, should you get the M3 MacBook Air compared to the rest of the lineup? I mean, base M2 MacBook Air is hella enticing right now. It's a hundred bucks cheaper at 999, and you're getting pretty much 80% of the way there. In fact, if you wanted both 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, you could get it for a hundred bucks cheaper at 1399 versus 1499 on the M3 chip. If this is something that you're struggling with, like you're struggling to decide between which chip to get, I'm gonna ask you a simple question which might help make it easier. How long do you keep your laptops for? Because if it's for a long time, like five years or something like that, then saving a hundred bucks right now amortized over those five years is not gonna be much. And me personally, I'd rather get the latest right now rather than being a year or two behind already at this point and then keeping the laptop for another five years. Albeit the M2 chip is fantastic. So if you do decide to go that route, I still think you're gonna be fine, but in my opinion, just having the latest that has just come out right now, and I'm gonna keep this for like five, six years, that just makes a little more sense. However, if money is the concern here and you want the cheapest you can get for the best price at this very moment, then honestly, I wouldn't even be looking at the M2. I would be looking at the M1 MacBook Air, which you can find refurbished on Apple or on the used market for quite a bit cheaper. And these things are still extremely capable. I remember when they initially came out, I was literally running my channel, video editing and doing everything on the M1 MacBook Air. So it's super capable. That way, maybe if you get the M1, use it for a couple more years and then look into getting something better at that point, maybe jumping to the MacBook Pro. But yeah, if you're in the market, 
market for a Mac right now, the M3 MacBook Air is an absolutely brilliant choice. I love this machine and I honestly don't think you can go wrong with it. In any case, I'll be doing more coverage on the MacBook Air and I have a few more videos planned that I think you're gonna enjoy. So if you're interested, make sure you guys are subbed. Let me know if you have any specific questions and I'll help you guys out there and I will see you in one of these two videos.